Hey, Shalom, Israel, Mosai, and Christ bless. I'm Captain Mattathias. To my right. I'm Officer Losais. And this is another 15 minutes with the captains. Today's topic is the Lord's Passover. All right, so we are going to go through how to keep the Passover. Uh, can we keep it in captivity? And ultimately, the reason behind the feast, all right? So let's dive into it. Give me a second, Ezra chapter 9, verse 37. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 37. Come on. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. Right. The scripture says that the law perisheth not. and does what? But remaineth in his force. Right. But, but remaineth in his force until when? Until present day. Until present day. Meaning what? When you read the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, when it talks about the feast of the Lord, and you get to the feast of unleavened bread, guess what? We still have to apply these commandments. We have to keep these feasts right. in this present time. All right. Now, I mentioned earlier that there's a narrative out there of people saying that you can't keep Passover, Tabernacles, can't keep the feast in captivity. Let's see what the Bible says. Give me the book of uh, Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 19. The book of Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 19. Come on. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover. Wait a second. You can't rush past that. Yes, sir. Read that again. And the children of the captivity. It says the children of the captivity, meaning what? We've been in captivity the majority of our existence, right. you understand, uh, whether it be the uh, Egyptians, the Assyrians, uh, the Babylonians, me the Persian, Greece, Rome, all the way to present day America, we've been in captivity. All right, read that verse again. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. So what are we saying? We're saying that our forefathers, even though they were in captivity, they didn't make an excuse they still kept the commandments of God, kept the Passover, and what? In captivity. So guess what we got to do today? We got to do the exact same thing. Stop making excuses and keep God's commandments. Right. All right, from there, let's go to Luke chapter 22 and verse 1 so we can get some understanding because there's some confusion. Some people say, I, w I even heard this before earlier on in the truth. That Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were two separate things. Let's see what the Bible says. The book Luke chapter 22 and verse 1. Come on. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Which is called the Passover. All right. So understand this. Uh, the Passover is the, the first night. All right. And we're going to get that later on in today's class when we go to uh, Exodus 12, Leviticus uh, 23. All right. Uh, then you have the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which goes on for seven days, and we must eat what? Unleavened bread for those seven days. Now, do me a favor. Before we get into it, jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Come on. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. Come on. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. So Christ, he sent Peter and John. He said, Go and prepare the Passover so we can eat, so we can keep what? Keep the feast, keep right. the commandments. All right, jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Come on. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Right. Before what? Before his day comes, all right, to go uh, be with the Father. All right, from there, jump down. Actually, just continue to read. Verse 16. Come on. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Sorry, that's, the cup is going into what? The wine. All right. The wine that we eat during, I'm sorry, that we drink during the feast. Read. And gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Read. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Do in remembrance of who? Jesus the Christ. Right. So understand, when it comes to this feast, it is symbolic of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, from there, give me Psalm chapter 40. And then we're going to dive into today's topic. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 7. The book of Psalms chapter 40 and verse 7. Come on. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. You see, it says he comes in the volume of the book. Meaning what? You have different chapters. So he's telling you all throughout the Bible from the very beginning, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. He says that he comes in the volume of the book. Now, give me Exodus chapter 12. 
tell you what, give me Leviticus 23 first. Leviticus chapter 23 and 4. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 4. Come on. These are the feasts of the Lord, uh -huh. even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Read. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Right. At even means at sundown. That's when the Passover begins on the 14th day of the first month. Uh, to give me that, um, to, to find out what the first month is, give me Deuteronomy chapter 16. All right. So it says the first, first month of the year. All right, watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16 and verse 1. Come on. Observe the month of Abib uh -huh. and keep the Passover. And keep the what? And keep the Passover. Right. So the first month of the year is the month of Abib. Now, the month of Abib falls late March, early April. Okay? So what, what, when are we keeping the feast? On April 1st this year at sundown. Okay? Uh, let's go back to um, Leviticus 23. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Read. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Come on. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Right. So this means what? The, fi the 14th day at even meaning what? That starts the next day, which is the 15th day. Meaning what? We have seven days of unleavened bread. Right. The feast of unleavened bread. All right, do me a favor. Let's go to Exodus 12, all right, to see more about our history, to learn more if you don't know. All right, Exodus 12, and I want you to start at verse 1. The book of Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. <clears throat> It shall be the first month of the year to you. Read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Mm -hmm. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count. For the lamb. Right. So the scripture commanded our forefathers when we were still in Egypt. It said, make sure you gather a lamb. Don't overdo it. Make sure you get a lamb that is sufficient for your household. OK, read verse five. Your lamb shall be without blemish, mm -hmm. a male of the first year. And ye shall and ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Right. So the scripture is telling you what you could use. Uh, a lamb, or you could use a goat. Either or is fine for the for the feast. All right, read on. Now I want to make a I want to make a statement. Even today, the majority of us what we don't own our own cattle. Some do, but the majority of us don't. All right. So what do we got to do? We still got to keep the feast to the best of our abilities. Yes, sir. All right. So you could go what to a supermarket, to a butcher shop, and get your lamb that way as well. All right. Go ahead. Verse six, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Mm -hmm. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door of the post of the house, wherein they shall eat it. Right. It says you shall eat it in the house. Now, right here in its, uh, in its context, this was going into our forefathers eating it within their house and spreading the blood on the doorpost. Why? Because the plague uh, was that. The firstborn of every household was going to be put to death unless the blood was spread over the doorpost. Okay, uh, read on. Verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire mm -hmm. and unleavened bread. And unleavened bread, read. And with bitter herbs, Come on. they shall eat it. All right, so we read earlier in uh, Luke 22, you had the wine, yes, sir. you had the bread. Here's saying what? You had the, the uh, you had a roast. Roast the lamb with the fire, the bread, mm -hmm. and the bitter herb shall ye eat. So that's the Passover meal right there. Right. It's not chicken. It's not uh, uh, mac, and mac and cheese. It's not lasagna. All right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's lamb, bitter herbs, uh, bread, and wine. That's what it is. That's the Passover meal according to the Holy Scriptures. Right. All right. Let's read on. Verse 9. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water. Right. Sodden goes into boiling it. So it's telling you exactly how to cook it. It says roast over fire, not sodden. And of course, we don't eat raw. We don't eat raw foods. Read. 
eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, Come on. but roast with fire, mm -hmm. his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Come on. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. You know, sometimes uh, your mama will cook a big meal, and uh, she want to keep it for two, three days. Mm -hmm. Leftovers. When it comes, yeah, leftovers. When it comes to uh, the Passover, we are not to do that. All right, that's why I said at the beginning, get a lamb that is sufficient for your household. Because why? There's not going to be any leftovers. Read that again. Verse ten. Come on. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Read. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. You shall do what? Burn with fire. It says, "Ye shall burn with fire." So now we're realizing what? You could use a lamb or a goat. The meal is roasted lamb or goat, unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and wine. All right? That's the Passover meal. And it's telling us that we cannot have any leftovers. Okay? Uh, read on. Verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, mm -hmm. and your staff in your hand. Read. And ye shall eat it in haste. And it is the Lord's Passover. Think about what was about to happen. We were about to be delivered, all right, from the hand of the Egyptians. So he said, don't eat it with uh, relaxing, right. with leisure. No, I'm about to put them to death, and your deliverance is coming. All right, now, read, yeah, read verse 12. I want to go into something a little bit different for a second. Verse 12. Come on. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Come on. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt. Right, against all of the gods of Egypt. All right, we're going to put up this diagram. I want you to look at this. And it says, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So we really got to understand what is being said right here. When he says, I will execute judgment, I am the Lord. So let's find out what this is really going into. Let's go to the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18. All right, this is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, 18. I want you to start at verse 11. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 11. Come on. The master and the servant were punished after one matter. Mm -hmm. And like as the king, so suffered the common person. Right. So it's talking about all of the Egyptians, Pharaoh and all of the common people were all punished by that plague that we just read about in what Exodus 12 and 12. Right. Read. Verse 12. So they all together had innumerable dead with one kind of death. With one kind of death. Come on. Neither were the living sufficient to bury them. For in one moment, the noblest offspring of them was destroyed. So it's saying there was so much death. There was not enough people to bury the dead. That's what the Most High God did for our people, our, the Israelites. Right. You understand? Come on. Verse 13. For whereas they would not believe anything by reason of the enha enhancements upon the... Read that again. Verse 13. For whereas they would not believe anything by reason of the enchantments... Upon the destruction of the firstborn, mm -hmm. they acknowledged this people to be the sons of God. You see that thing right there? The Egyptians acknowledged the Israelites to be, okay, we admit, okay, you have the one true God. Y'all are the children of the Most High. All right, read on. Verse 14, for while all things were in quiet silence, and that night was in the midst of her swift course, Thine almighty word leap down from heaven. It out. says thine almighty word. Who is this talking about? It's just talking about Christ. Right. Remember when you read John, the first chapter, it says he was the word made flesh. Read that again. Verse 15. Thine almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne. Come on. As a fierce man of war uh -huh. into the midst of the land of destruction. Read. And brought thine unfeigned commandment. As a sharp sword. Right. So God gave the order that all the firstborn was going to be put to death. And Christ jumped off the throne to execute the order. Read. And standing up filled all things with death. And did what? Standing up filled all things with death. Come on. And it touched the heaven, but it stood upon the earth. Read. Then suddenly visions of horrible dreams troubled them sore. And terrors came upon them unlooked for. Mm -hmm. And one throne... One thrown here and another there, half dead, showed the cause of his death. What is this talking about? This is a, this is a, a crime scene here. All right, so you see one body part over here. You see another limb over there. It's showing you how they were put to death. This is Christ being the death angel against the Egyptians. Right. Read. Verse 19. 
for the dreams that troubled them did foreshow this. Meaning what? It was so fierce. It was so harsh that before they were put to death, they saw it in their own dreams. They saw how Christ was going to put them to death. Read. This, lest they should perish and not know why they were afflicted. Meaning what? He wanted them to know why they got put to death. Mm. All right, now, remember, remember it says, do this in remembrance of me. Meaning what? Christ, he was there. He is the one who led us in the wilderness. He's the one who put these Egyptians to death. So when we eat this feast, when we remember what uh, the Most High Christ did for us, we got, we got to remember in detail. Right. We really need to know what's going on here. All right, from there, let's go back. Let's go to uh, Exodus 12 and 14. All right, Exodus 12 and 14. Read that. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 14. Come on. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. How long? Throughout your generations. Until what? Meaning what? We still generating today. Right. So that means we still have to keep the feast. Jump to uh, verse 46. Verse 46. Come on. In one house shall it be eaten. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Read. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. Neither shall ye do what? Break a bone thereof. Right. It says, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. Let's go to John chapter 19 and verse 30. All right. This is the book of John chapter 19, verse 30. Let's see what this is symbolic of. Read what you got. John chapter 19 and verse 30. Uh -huh. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He, he said it is what? It is finished. Read. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Verse 31. Uh -huh. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation. Uh oh. Verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar. He said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain up upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. For that Sabbath day was an high, an high day. We sought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Right. So when they were on the crucifix, remember they were nailed on the crucifix, so they normally did what? They broke their legs to get them down. Read. Verse 32. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. So let's find out why they didn't break his legs. The Messiah. Read. Verse 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forwith came there out blood and water. Read. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he said true, that ye might believe. Come on. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. Uh -huh. A bone of him shall not be broken. And we just read that in Exodus 12 and verse 46. Meaning what? That lamb, that Passover lamb was who? Christ. It was symbolic of Jesus Christ. All right. From there, uh, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 17. All right. Let's go to Luke 24. The book of Luke chapter 24 and verse 17. Come on. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another? And as ye walk and are sad. Right. So this is after Christ already um, uh, was already dead, and he came back. He resurrected. Excuse me. Uh, jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. Come on. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God mm -hmm. and all the people. So Christ asked, you, why are you sad? Now they're explaining what, what took place. Read. Verse 20. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. And have crucified him. Read. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Right. So they're saying it was prophesied that he would be the one to redeem the nation of Israel. Right. All right. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Come on. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? And to enter into his glory. Read. And the, be and the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Right. So he said, hey, 
What are you talking about? This is exactly what happened. Christ actually did fulfill it. Then he began to explain things like we just read. Exodus 12, verse 46, so on and so on. He explained all of the prophecies pertaining to him. Another one is Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Let's go to Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 7. All right, we almost done. We're about to wrap it up. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, and verse 7. Read that. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Right. So Christ knew that what? He had to come fulfill the purpose or the reason why God sent him here in the first place, to die for the nation of Israel. Okay? Uh, read on. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. It says that Christ was what? Brought as a lamb to the slaughter. So in Isaiah, it's already prophesying what? That he would be brought as a lamb to the slaughter, meaning what? He would be brought to the earth to die for the nation of Israel. Read. And as a sheep before the shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. That's the end of verse 7? Yes, sir. Uh, let's go to Le uh, Leviticus 16 real quick. All right. Don't want this to be too long. Uh, let's go to uh, Leviticus 16 and start at verse 20. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 20. Come on. And when he hath made an end of reconciling. Read that again. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation, and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Right. Who's the he? This is going into the priest. All right. It says, when he have made an end of reconciling the holy place, it says, and the tabernacle, which is the temple, it says, he shall bring the live goat. Watch this. Verse 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel. All of the what? All the iniquities of the children of Israel. Read. And all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Right. So it says they will put all of the iniquity of the children of Israel into this goat and they will send him away outside of the camp, outside of the city into the wilderness. All right, from there. Uh, no, read 22. Read 22. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. That's 22? Yes, sir. Jump down to 27. Verse 27. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins. And their flesh and their dung. And right. It says that he would be what? Sacrificed. He would be sacrificed. Now, two more. Let's go back to Isaiah uh, 53. And I want verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4. Come on. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, mm -hmm. smitten of God, and afflicted. Watch this. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Those transgressions is going into sin or iniquity. Mm -hmm. It says he was wounded for our transgressions. Read. He was bruised for our iniquities. There it is. All of the iniquities of the children of Israel were laid on this one man. Read. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. John chapter 1, verse 29. All right, watch this. So all, all of it is symbolic of Christ. He came in the volume of the book. It was written of him. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. All right, read what you got. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Come on. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Which world? The world of Israel. Right. It says that Christ is the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of Israel. Now, give me the book of Matthew 27, and I want 29 through 33. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, and verse 29. Come on. And when they have plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. They put it upon his head, read. And they read in his right hand. Mm -hmm. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Read on. And they spit upon him, and they took the reed and smote him on the head. And after, th after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe from off from him and put his own raiment on him 
and led him away to crucify him. They did what? Led him away to crucify him. They led him away to sacrifice him. Read. And as they came out, they found a man of Serene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Come on. And when they were come unto a place called Golo Golotha, Golgotha, Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. So what are we realizing? That the same thing that the priest did to the scapegoat, they did the same thing to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right? They took him out of Jerusalem the same way they did with the scapegoat. They bring him to the wilderness. They did the same thing with Christ. Why? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. Come on. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Right. So understand all of this. The leaven is symbolic of sin. That's why we are to eat the unleavened bread for seven days. Meaning what? To remove the leaven, to remove the iniquity, to remove the sin. All right. So it says, read that again for me. Verse 5. Verse 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Right. A little sin is going to destroy everything. Read on. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Right. It says purge out the iniquity. Read. That ye may be a new lump. That ye may be a new lump. We are the new lump. Those who believe on Christ. Read. As ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover. Even Christ our what? Even Christ, our Passover. Even Christ, our Passover lamb, read. Is sacrificed for us. Is sacrificed for us. So what do we have to do, brothers and sisters? We have to remove the sin and accept Christ and remember him in the feast. So right. I know it was, uh, it was a lot in about 20 minutes, but this has been another 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Mattathias. And I'm Officer Low Size. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.